Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. <laughs> Okay, so this is going off with our big scarecrow we've got here. What I've done is I've given him a Zenithal Prime. That's starting off with black and then spraying over the top with white directly from above so we can get those shadows in there. And we're going to be using Rigid Leather as our first color. And what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to be using it for the big uh, coat he's got on that's covering up pretty much his entire body. I'm just going to be giving it a nice uh, covering with this. And as you can see, I've thinned down the paint a little bit so I can really take full advantage of our Zenithal Highlight Prime. But I will be going over it in a couple of layers to really build it up uh, slowly and really help uh, concentrate on giving the nice overall good uh, even quality of uh, paint on there so we can take full advantage, like I said, of that Zenithal Highlight. Then once we have the base of that cloak painted up, what we're going to be doing now is coming on with some Rhinox Hide. And with our Rhinox Hide, I'm just going to be using it for the trims of the cloak. So this is going to be the nice uh, collar here and of course the cuffs of our cloak as well. Giving that nice uh, really dark brown to help uh, emphasize some of these areas we're going to be using brighter colors with later on and really help uh, tie that coat together as it's a nice old one that they've thrown away that's clearly uh, been ragged and torn and they're just stitched together so I want to give that effect by having it sort of uh, cobbled together and it's really warm then once we've got that complete what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some khaki and we're going to be using this for the pants like I said this scarecrow is cobbled together out of uh, unwanted and damaged clothing that no one really cares about or like so we're going with some very sort of muted colors nothing really bright or fancy that's going to come in uh, later on when we're painting it up then add in a full effect so I want to keep it sort of boring and drab and make it look like he's run down with just leftover and forgotten about clothing then once we have those pants complete, we're coming in now with some Avalon Sunset. And this is going to be using for the straw of our uh, scarecrow we've got here. Since he's covered up with some nice hay and straw. And I'm going with a nice uh, bright uh, Avalon Sunset. Which is sort of like a mustard yellow. But looks very, very bright against these sort of drab colours we've got here. It's a little bit darker in uh, real life than it is on the camera here. But as, as you can see, it's giving off that effect already with those nice drab colours we've got. Really adding in a pop of colour to the miniature. It's a matter of going around and picking out all the little straws of hay. And uh, really trying to get into those nooks and crannies since they're all nicely sculpted all together. So just be aware of that as you're painting them up. Then once we have all those tufts of hay and straw painted up, we're going to come in now some dark stone and this is of course keeping with our drab mundane look and we're going to be using this for our boots so uh, dark stone is a very sort of uh, dark brown color so it's really adding to the effect it's a little slightly different than our rhinoxide here but you could use rhinoxide as well if you don't have another sort of deep drab brown color uh, but this is going to help give us some nice overall variety burnt umber would also be a good substitute for this it's very similar to a burnt umber color and it's just a matter of going around picking out those boots and paying uh, close attention to where the creases and folds are then once we have his boots complete what we're going to be doing now is we're going to move on to that scythe and we're going to be using some smoke for this now smoke is uh, uh, a brown very sort of runny paint almost nearly like a contrast paint um and we're going to be using this to just be doing the uh, handle of the scythe here. It's a very interesting sort of reddish uh, brown color. It's a mixture of a whole bunch of different browns. It's really cool for uh, a different sort of looking brown. Um, and we're just going around making sure that we try and avoid any areas we don't want to paint up now. But because we're still in the base coating uh, stage, it's not too big a deal if we accidentally get it somewhere we don't want to. Since this paint is a little bit runnier than our ordinary paints we're using at the moment. Then once we have the handle of the scythe painted up, we're going to come in now with some deck tan. And this is, of course is a very sort of off-white colour. And we're going to be using this for uh, the stitching of our scarecrow here. It's all cobbled together as well as that, as well as the stitching all over him. He's got quite a lot. We're also going to be using it to paint up the glove as well. He's just got the one glove and the other hand is sort of being put in with the scythe. A very cool, intimidating looking uh, scarecrow. This is very unique. That's what draw my eye to it and why I wanted to paint it up for this uh, Halloween episode that we've got going on here. So something really interesting and unique. And it's just a matter of coming in and picking out all those little stitching. It's going to take a little while since there is quite a lot over the model, but don't be afraid. It's going to really help sell the effect by the end of it. 
Then once we have all those little stitchings picked out, we can come in now with some Agrax Earthshade. And this is going to be going over a wash over everything we've just painted up so far. We'll give it all a nice big coating wash. And you can see I've switched to a nice wide brush to do this. And I'm giving it a real sort of heavy slap on there. I want it to appear not just as like a wash to get into those recesses and that as well as i also want it to be really dirty and grungy because like i said these are discarded clothing that the scarecrow is made out of and i wanted to give it that a feel as well so i'm going with a bit of a heavier wash i'm not worrying about it if it pulls up in some areas as well just get sell off that effect like it's yuck and grimy then once that wash is completely dry, we're going to come in now with some gun metal. And this, of course, is going to be used for any of the metallic areas, which is just one pretty much area on this miniature. And that is the scythe. And, of course, is the nice big scary blade he's got on him as well. As well as that, there's also one little uh, band of metal holding the uh, two bits of the handle together on the other end as well. So don't forget to do uh, that too while you're coming over and doing this nice big massive scary imposing and intimidating scythe especially on a monster coming at you like this and there's that little uh, ring of metal that we want to be getting as well okay now we've got that metal painted up what we're going to be doing now is adding in some effects to that metal so we're coming in with golem and flesh which is a contrast paint which is going to be great you sort of like a heavy wash but we're going to be applying it to our metal here so anywhere we've got our metal and this is going to give it a nice very tarnished sort of nearly rust effect on the metal i really like the effect that this gives off i use this in some uh, previous paint jobs in the past and i really like the effect that it gives us really sort of worn down neglected metal look and it's just a matter of going around giving it a good overall coat with this stuff then once our effect is completely dried up we're going to come in now with some orange fire and this is going to be a big center point color of our model and this of course is going to be for our pumpkin head that he's got here very intimidating sort of pumpkin face so we're going to be giving us a nice overall coat we want to really build this up as well since uh orange is quite a thin color we want to be building that up so we get those uh that nice bright rich color and it's just a matter of going into all those areas as well just like inside the nose and the eyes they're just really building it up so we can get a good overall coating of this color then once we have that painted up, we're going to come in now with another colour, and that's going to be some dark green. And this is just going to be for the little stalk on top. You may want to go with the brown and stuff here, but like I said, I want that face to be a nice focal point, so that's where we want to add all our colour, our nice bright popping contrast against everything we've got here. So using some uh, bright colours there to really help attract our eye to that face. Then once we have our stalk painted up, I'm going to come in now with some dry rust. This is an effect paint, and it's great for applying, a, as it implies, a rust effect. And I'm just coming around here with a dry brush, uh, with some of the dry rust uh, stippled onto it. And I'm just basically just sort of jabbing at it, sort of giving it a stipple effect, and really uh, building it up. As you can see, it doesn't look like too much since I've got that... Uh, orange color over top of it anyway and then we're building up with another orange but once you build it up over time you'll start give, giving off the effect of rust as it slowly built up then now we've got that nice rusty blade what we're going to be doing is coming in with some agrax earthshade once again so you probably want to save your whole agrax earthshade wash for now but i'm sort of painting this as i go along and feeling what i feel like at the time and i want to go with a nice uh, dark wash for our face sort of jack-o-lantern face that we've got going on here i wasn't sure if i wanted to go with sort of a yellow wash or a black wash but i'm going to stick with a brown wash here so i'll save the whole uh brown washing step for uh, this step right here so you can do it all at once rather than me go around and paint another section and then have to do the wash again then once we have that wash all dry, we're going to come back in now with some Avalon Sunset. And this is going to be, of course, to pick out our hay and straw that he's uh, filled with. And it's just a matter of coming in now and picking out some of these individual strands. Sort of, I'm just giving it a quick uh, swipe over the top. I'm not worried too much about it. Really just trying to catch the edges here. I see I've got a bit of a flat point on my brush. Just used to skim it along the top picking out certain ones and really giving it off the effect like it's highlight maybe i'm aiming for ones that would be in the sunlight or in this case the moonlight just uh, where that light would naturally reflect from then once we have those bits of straw and hay picked out time to come back in with our rigid leather and of course since we used it on our coat it's just natural to use it again on our coat for our highlighting steps now i'm not going crazy with the highlights i want them to be a little bit more stuck uh, subtle uh, like i said i'm um, wanting this to be a sort of dirty drab thrown away uh, coat that he's you know being made out of so i'm not going too crazy with the highlights i don't need them too contrasting like i said i'm focusing most of that stuff for the the face is where i want that focus to be so this is just sort of subtle highlightings in the area and really giving a nice effect overall 
and just sort of enhancing areas where it needs it. And then once we've highlighted that coat, what we're going to be doing again is coming on some Rhinox Hide. And I'm going to be mixing in a little bit of deck tan this time since Rhinox Hide is such a dark color. And applied that wash would be very, very subtle. So I want to make it a, a little bit more noticed. So I'm just adding just a tiny drop of deck tan in there to really hopefully help uh, add it in. But Rhinox Hide is a very deep and dark color so it's just a matter of coming in i'm just using it also to pick out just the edges the absolute sort of sharpest points of our model then once we have those edges picked out what we're doing now is coming back in with just the deck tan itself and we're going to be using this for the highlights of course on our little bits of stitching and the glove as well so as well as this i'm gonna as you can see i flattened down the brush again just so i can use it to skim along the top and really catch those edges and um, with the uh the little bits of stitching as well it's just one quick swipe over i'm not trying to repaint them over again i just want just the tips done so it's just a nice quick swipe it doesn't matter if it covers the whole thing or not it's just a matter of uh giving it that uh, effect like the uh, moonlight or just whatever light is coming from it's just reflecting off it and making just the tiniest bit of difference in the lighting then once we have all that stitching and the glove picked out we're going to come in now with some matte black and what we're going to be doing with the matte black is we're just going to be using it for inside the mouth of our jack-o-lantern face we've got here so a little bit of precise detail brush work here switch to a smaller brush if you need to it's not too bad as long as we get it all inside that mouth we don't we definitely don't want it any of the orange of the actual jack-o-lantern face but if it gets over the teeth and stuff it's not that big a deal we can come in and paint it up but it's just about all nice precise brush control with this then once we've got all that mouth all blacked out what we're going to do now is come in with some ivory and the ivory is going to be to pick out the teeth of course so we can have those nice uh, scary intimidating teeth really pop out against that nice uh, black inside of the mouth i was going to just keep it with the wash of the orange but i wanted that more striking contrast in color so painting it into black is going to really help bring out the details of those teeth and really give it that more intimidating sort of appearance and make it look uh might keep us concentrated a bit more on the face as well as well as that i'm also going to be painting inside the eyes as well i'll we'll do like a little glowing eye effect too okay so now we've got that ivory all painted up with those teeth in the eyes we're going to come in now with some seraphim sepia and we're going to be using this of course for our teeth we want to yellow those teeth down they don't i mean you can go with nice big bright shiny white pearly whites but i'm keeping the focus onto the eyes not the teeth so i want them to be the brightest thing so we want to get rid of uh that sort of same colorness with the eyes and the teeth by just um dabbling them down and making his teeth look sort of gnarly and old and like he's been using them a lot as well so, and Sarah from sepia is going to help with that then once we've applied the wash to our teeth now we're going to come in with some shining silver and this of course is to be giving a highlight to our scythe blade that we've got here our nice rusted scythe blade so i want the the uh, the sharp edge of that blade to really show off and like it's really catching and looking really intimidating so you can see here that i've got my uh, shining silver and i'm just streaking it along the blade of our scythe here really sort of being really rough with it i'm not trying to make it a nice even swipe i'm just swishing it back and forth making it look like this blade is being used and it's more sharpened from being used than it is being properly sharpened to give it that more intimidating sort of intense presence as well as that i'm just going to be quickly going along the uh, sh absolute sharpest edge here as well then once we have that menacing scythe all painted up it's time to come back in with our orange fire and this of course is to be going back over the area of our jack-o-lantern face and we're going to be avoiding the recesses of course we want to keep that nice and dark but we want to keep those uh, outer portions really nice and bright and vibrant so we've got that really good looking focal point on our face and it's going to really stand out from far away on the table as an intimidating presence and it's just a matter of going around being very careful where you're placing it and just slowly building up the layers again like i said orange is a very sort of uh, thin color so you really need to slowly build it up over time to get its full effect that you want to go for then once you've built up all that color again we're kind of come in with our nice final sort of really good effect and that's coming in with some jungle green and giving those eyes a nice green glow really uh giving them that super focused in point and because it's such a bright color um on there as well it's going to really help draw the eye in really really fast and being r pretty precise here and getting it inside that eye socket doesn't matter if it spills out just a little bit since it's such a thin color um but really giving it a area to sort of um pop out and really make it an attracting piece on him 
Okay, so this is one last totally optional step. I'm coming back in with the ivory now, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing inside the uh, eye sockets, the very sort of center point, and just dotting in our ivory here to make it look like uh, the green glow is sort of radiating from the central point of his eyes where it's super tight and focused this is totally up to you you could just easily stick with the green here as well but this is just for an added effect uh, to really try and sell it that it has a really intense center point And with all that complete, we have finally finished painting up our large scarecrow from the Reaper Bones miniature line. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Whether you want to follow along with what I did here, or you just want to use this video for some inspiration of painting up your own miniatures. So with all that said, guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.